The incredible world of Deke Entertainment is just that, incredible. How a company that undervalued not only its employees, animators, and investors did two things while it was alive. Create timeless classics while at the same time bankrupting itself into oblivion. From being anti-union, having various successful syndications, Deke has one of the most incredible histories as an animation company. So how did it go to the grave? Well, let's dive in. And knowing is half the battle. Deke, also known as Diffusion Information Communications, was founded in France in 1971 by Jean Chalpin. Stupid America. At the time, it was known as Deke Audiovisual from the late 1970s and 80s. The company was well known for dubs and translations, which is semi-ironic considering some of the scripts. Snooping as usual, I see. Under the division of Radio Television Luxembourg. In 1981, Deke partnered with Tokyo Movie Shinza to get started on its international career. During the time, Deke would collaborate on Ulysses 31, as well as Lupin the Eighth, which never got released up until Lupin the Third Master File box set. This particular episode was a French-Japanese co-production with the plot revolving around the descendants of Lupin and company. This two-episode special only had one episode completed with animation, music, and effects, but was never released to the public. Because LeBlanc's estate wanted a large sum for the Lupin name in France, the launch was canceled. However, it is rumored to be the inspiration for their hit show, Inspector Gadget, in 1983. In 1982, Deke would expand from France to the United States in Burbank, California, while in the States would translate cartoons to dub for American audiences. Andy Hayward, former story writer for Hanna-Barbera, would oversee the operations as well as make this sector of Deke non-union. Now for those not in the know, IATSE Local 839 in Burbank oversees and protects animators, writers, and technicians. Just keep that in mind. This meant that most of the shows produced would be outsourced overseas to cheaper companies and hired employees on a per-show basis to cut costs. Deke. ABC would be where Deke would take off with shows like The Littles and Heathcliff. The company would then get into partnerships with toy and greeting card companies to stay afloat, but also utilize the IP and characters to create TV shows like Care Bears. By then, Deke would be one of the first non-union studio houses with investors to go up against heavy-hitting giants such as Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. In order to bypass overseas contractors, Deke KK Asia was created in 1983. In various attempts to unionize, which all failed, Certain branches of Deke were created to save on cost, which would later expand to LBS Communications, Mattel, Columbia Pictures, Colex Enterprises, and Access Syndication. By then, Deke bought the rights to Carl Lorimar Home Video. In the late 80s, more investors came to give Deke 52% stake in stock, brought to you by Bear Stearns & Company, Prudential Insurance, and Radio Television Luxembourg. This cost Deke $70 million, and while this happened, many presidents left the company and Deke fell into debt. Not only did investors buy them out, but due to the non-union policies, as well as a complete overflow of Deke content, it seemed all too grim for the company. Because Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network overshadowed Deke and kids content was already in abundance, Deke would partner with Saban Productions after the inevitable collapse. During the collab with Saban, it would be even worse with both parties not liking each other. A would create a toxic relationship with investors and form alliances, which would then make Deke sue Saban until they reached settlements. During this relationship, Saban and Deke would make partnerships with video game companies in 1989, such as Nintendo to create the Super Mario Bros. Super Show and The Legend of Zelda. While this went on, Deke would sign with Coca-Cola Telecommunications and sign with toy companies to make money with the old McDonald talking toy line. While making money with these toy lines and doing business with Saban, Deke would get into another lawsuit with Family Home Entertainment or breach a contract with distributing Dennis the Menace. Turns around and sues LBS for being found out on a joint account being trafficked out of the Cayman Islands. After this lawsuit broke a deal with Golden Book Video, Dennis the Menace would then get tax write-offs in Canada to save face for Deke. Investors would then bring Deke to the forefront of Saturday morning cartoons to get money back to investors for 30% content distribution on a 60-hour TV week. CBN Family would then get Deke for Fun Town to air most of the kid-friendly shows and Deke would get ad share while the network would take care of the marketing. In 1990, Deke would score a deal with Turner Broadcasting to create Captain Planet with Ted Turner to teach kids about global warming and saving the environment with a toy line bonus for three seasons until 1993. And they were also responsible for these two episodes right here. May I have your attention, please? A lot of you are worried about AIDS, and there's a rat in your midst who's been spreading AIDS. I need more bliss. Sorry, kid, but the price of bliss has gone sky high. That isn't enough to buy even one pill. Please give me some. I am in agony. Deal with the real, people. The power is yours. Speeds by Sonic the Hedgehog. Too fast for the naked eye. Sonic the Hedgehog. 
Successors of video game TV shows back in the day were in the demand for Deke for the time being. Deke partners with Mediaset SPA, Telecino, and Silvio Bersconi Communications. Deke would make another winning move partnering with Boabot Entertainment and Sega of America to create both the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog. There's a difference between the two. ABC would air both of these shows on Saturday mornings known to most fans as Sat AM. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is akin to SpongeBob SquarePants as a happy-go-lucky cartoon while also giving moral lessons after the show known as Sonic Says. Kids, there's nothing more cool than being hugged by someone you like. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. While Sonic the Hedgehog follows the Archie comics on the Freedom Fighters taking back their land Mobius from Dr. Robotnik. After 1993, Sonic the Hedgehog would be canceled on a cliffhanger. Deke would then get into talks with Polygram and Capital City's ABC, but that fell flat after a few shows were canceled. Albeit, on July 26, 1993, Deke entered into business with ABC under limited partnerships. Deke would then expand its entertainment strategy by upgrading its technology and become Deke Interactive. While Saban would see success with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Deke would sign with Subaya Productions to release Gridman the Hyper Agent and Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad in 1994 to 1995. While this happened, Sailor Moon would be dubbed in 1995 and 1998 for season one, supported by General Mills and distributed on Cartoon Network. And for those who didn't have the CN, it was on the <laughs> After the successes of these cartoons and pivot to anime, Deke would release Stunt Dogs, while at the same time seal a deal with BMG for two subsidiaries, Deke Toon Time Audio and Video. July 1995, Disney would sign a deal with Capital Cities ABC to absorb Deke in the process. With this merger, Buena Vista would make Deke a shareholder and give stock to Deke Films, which would then sign to Walt Disney Films in 1996. In 1998, the company collaborated with Riley Catherine Ellis, who worked for Caravan Pictures as their producer to create Buena Vista Home Entertainment. The first release coming from Deke Films was Madeline, lost in Paris in 1999. Months later, would strike a deal with PAX TV to release Freddy's Firehouse but would fall short after the block Cloud 9 would get more deep content. During the 2000s, Andy Haywood would buy back Deke from Disney with the help of Bain Capital and Chase Capital Partners. By November 25th, Disney would give back the company, however, Deke would go back to its old ways. Without the limitations and union rules of Disney, Deke would go back to outsourcing overseas, being non-union, and making bad deals. In 2001, Deke would sign a deal with Lionsgate Entertainment to go back to the home entertainment game. But while this happens, Golden Books Family Entertainment would back out of a deal out of $170 million due to high cost and would then partner with Random House and Classic Media to distribute home media and children's books. In 2003, Deke would expand itself to make Deke Kids Network to air its own content on various channels, while on the other hand sue Speed Racer Enterprises for breach of contract airing Speed Racer X and other Speed Racer IPs under Deke. How Entertainment would partner to create Stan Lee's Super Secret 6 which was never aired. Because the Deke Kids block was doing low views while Deke content itself was out the door considering buyouts, lawsuits, and the mid-2000s, Deke would return to the Walt Disney Company and get international rights to certain shows under Jetix Europe. KOL's Secret Slumber Party would air after a partnership with CBS Corporation which would air three hours each Saturday. Deke would partner with Nelvana and NBC Universal to make Kids Co while at the same time sue Dam for breach of contract with the Trolls IP. While these lawsuits were going on, Deke would merge with the Cookie Jar Group for $87.6 million made by Jeffrey Adel. Due to the merger, Deke would change the Deke Kids name to Cookie Jar Kids and release Sushi Pack. The merger would prove successful up until 2014, when Cookie Jar would close down and merge with DHX Media, also known as Wild Brain. Deke's final resting place as well as all IPs are all under the Wild Brain name. Deke is the crusty crab of animation studios. Cuts corners, the boss is pretty cheap, but the product is digestible with workers that can put up with it or dread the work just for a check. It's a no-brainer why Deke is no longer around. 
too many cooks were in the kitchen, as investors would either give too much stock or bail the company out. Not only that, the non-union approach was what turned a lot of animators away. As most heavy hitters were union houses that could represent their workers, D can only devalue its talent while adding insult to injury by outsourcing work overseas to cut costs. Making cheap animation during the 80s and 90s was self-evident in many cases with a bunch of networks, but unlike Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network who were able to reinvest and outbid on projects, Deek would underbid on projects and only hire on a freelance basis. This didn't hurt the name so much as its content was memorable in a sense and gained an edge by creating video game based cartoons, albeit creating rifts and relationships with partners such as Saban, who would outlast Deke for a few years up until its shutdown. Deke survived through the skin of its teeth by partnerships in various cartoons it had under its IP. Today, it lives on through Wild Brain, which to this day keeps the legacy alive by rebooting certain Deke IPs. For us 90s kids, Deke was a staple in our childhoods, but like everything, was a little kid's dream put to rest. Deke.